Welcome to another episode of It Takes a Viking, the official podcast of the Salem State University Alumni Association. My name is Mike Mitchell, Associate Director of Alumni Relations here at Salem State. Very excited to welcome to the show today a 1996 graduate from Salem State from the Salem State University uh, Police Department. Please welcome Officer Glenn Young. Glenn, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for having me today. It's going to be a great conversation. We're bringing this interview out to our to our alumni and friends audience as part of Salem State University's LGBTQ History Month. Um, and this is part of a unique role that you play within the Department of University Police here on campus. Um, and we're going to get into that a little bit later on. But I, I think as I was getting to learn a little bit more about you, I think one of the interesting things is that you had sort of a non-conventional path to get to where you are today. Um, so if you don't mind, talk about a little bit about kind of how you ended up at Salem State, maybe what you studied, and then Kind of what happened after you left as a graduate sure so i guess my the way i got to salem state initially was um i took a few years after high school trying to figure out what i was going to do and um decided that just going from job to job wasn't for me i walked in the door at salem state looked at all the flyers picked up the geology flyer said i like geology i like rocks and uh and I applied to be a geology major. Um, and making my way through that program was amazing to me. Um, it was like a little family within the university. Um, and I, I enjoyed that tremendously. Um, and then through Salem State, I got some of my first um, jobs in the field. Um, two companies that were actually Salem State alums hired me. And I worked in geology for um, almost 10 years before I shifted into law enforcement. Um, and I worked as a police officer in Rhode Island for 15 years. I actually worked as the lone cop on a tiny little island in Narragansett Bay called Prudence Island. And then um, we made our way back home here to Salem and uh, I became a police officer here at the university. And one of the things that that you know as we were talking kind of before we started today one of the things that was intriguing about the role that you play within the university police department is that you're the designated lgbtq plus liaison to the salem state community so can you talk a little bit about kind of what what's entailed with being in that role um some of the the training experience you've had to date and, and elaborate a little bit for the folks that are watching sure absolutely so it's um it's a new program and it is still coming together, you know, it's still forming, um, but there's a few different roles within that role. So one of them being that I would be an interface between students, faculty and staff who are members of the LGBTQ plus community and the police department. Um, now, like any member of our community can be helped by any officer on the department and can walk in the door 24 hours, seven days a week. And, and anybody who works for us can provide them with whatever assistance they need. But there are some people who may be uncomfortable just walking through the door of the police department or have had bad experiences with police. And um, they could reach out to me directly and I can be counted on to be an ally and a friend and someone who's open-minded and open-hearted and can guide them through whatever services they need at the police department. Um, I think the, the formation of the role came about when we had these, this, um, uh, you're probably aware, but some of the listeners might not be. We had this um, person who was frequenting the university who was, um, saying some controversial things under this sort of, he was preaching this uh, very anti-LGBTQ message and attracting large crowds and causing, you know, a disruption and, and, and causing harm and trauma to our, our students. Um, and many of the students just wanted him to be thrown off campus. Um, but legally we weren't able to do that. And I think it caused kind of a rift between our um, LGBTQ plus students, faculty and staff and the police department. And so I think 
part of the this this role was created in part to sort of um, heal that relationship and and create a pathway to communicate between the police department and members of the community who who maybe feel unseen or unheard by the police department. So I think that is the foundation of why why we started this program. And now I in the in the, the re, I know the University Police Department had um, on one of their social channels recently talked a little bit about um, kind of some of your objectives in this role um, and, and you just elaborated on them a little bit as well but can you talk about some of the the training that you've gone through I know there was a there was an intensive Academy style program um, and I know one of the the pieces in the announcement that was was a point of pride for me with with the announcement of this position within University Police was that you were the first uh, university police officer to graduate from this program. So can you talk a little bit about um, kind of what that program was, kind of who facilitates it, maybe some of the objectives of it, um, and just kind of dive a little bit deeper into um, the, the training that it provided? Sure. Uh, so I was a graduate of um, the LG. LGBTQ plus liaison academy, which is run by um, a company out of California called Out to Protect. Um, and the training itself had several objectives. A lot of it was awareness um, for someone like myself to become aware of a lot of the challenges and nuances that members of the LGBTQ plus community uh, are faced with that uh, I was never aware of. In addition to that, it talks about, you know, ways to be a strong ally. It talked about, um, there was a whole course component on hate crimes that was focused on LGBTQ plus um, specific needs. Um, in addition to that, there were ways there was a component of the course that um, talked about how to create a safe work environment within the police department, um, and then how to interact with the community. We talked about press releases and how to create events and how to, um, to bridge the gaps between police departments and some of our LGBTQ plus community members. It was a, like a 40 hour online course and um, it took a, a while to complete it. And then when I did complete it, they, um, they reached out to me and told me I was one of the first people in the country to complete it and the only university police officer to complete it. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, and certainly, you know, that individual when he was here with his nonsense last year, not a, not a, not a welcome person on this campus at all, but it's tough for, for those folks that, you know, may have the challenge of understanding that you can't just take them and, and remove them from campus, unfortunately. Um, sure. So it seems like this is an, an appropriate um, kind of next step to help, you know, uh, reignite the conversation, recreate the community building a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's going to be a, a terrific opportunity for the University Police Department. I think it's a great opportunity for our, our greater university community. Um, but what I'd like to do is shift gears a little bit, um, because one of the things that I'm noticing um, is that the folks that we're talking to this season as part of the podcast, everybody's mentioning at one point or another. I always ask the question, you know, if you're in front of a, a class of, of seniors who are getting ready to graduate in any respected field, um, what advice would you give them? And, and the common thread that I think parallels what you've been talking about as well is that everybody's saying nothing is going to happen in a straight line for you. So be open to change, be open to maybe going in a direction that you weren't considering. Um, and I'm wondering if, you know, you could go back and talk to yourself as a, a college senior what do you think you would tell yourself or any current senior students? Well, I guess if I were talking to myself at college age, thinking back, I was tremendously caught up in, in the past, sort of like worried about mistakes I had made and how they were going to affect me 
And I was also stuck worrying about the future. Like, oh, is this going to go right for me? Am I, you know, am I going to get this job? I've got to get through college. And I spent so much time in the past and the future that I didn't enjoy the present moment. So if I were talking to myself, I would try to encourage myself to live in the present moment and shed the past and the future. Great. I think if I were talking to students today, I think I might say something a little bit different in that I feel like there's an awful lot of pressure today on young people to make the right choice and to, you know, if they, if they do this wrong, they're going to screw up their whole life, you know, and I'm somebody who has gone from one career to another. I felt like I've lived a bunch of different lifetimes, making a bunch of different choices going in about as crooked a line as you can travel. And I, I would try to take some of the pressure off of those decisions because, you know, every thing that's perceived as a mistake is an opportunity to learn something and to see something new and to move on in a different way. So I would, I would try to lighten the pressure on every little decision. Okay. That's good advice. Evan. Um, and so last question before we let you go, we always like to end with this one. Um, you're a 96 grad, you finish your time here, you go into one field, then you go into a different field. And now, you know, some years later, you're back on campus. You've seen how it's changed and grown since you graduated. Um, but all of that to say, you're a member of this community, you're a member of this family. What does being a part of the Salem State community and being a Salem State Viking mean to you? Well, I think the, the key to that is, is community. Um, my, in my previous job, I worked in a, a small rural area and it was the first time in my life I really experienced community. Um, and when I left there to come to the city, I thought I was leaving that behind. I thought that, you know, we're gonna go to, it's a small city, but it's city life. Um, and then I worked a couple of years on the night shift, which is kind of isolating. But the last couple of years, I have been connecting with the college community as a whole, meeting students, meeting faculty and staff, and, and sort of building some relationships. And I really feel like, you know, um, I really do feel like I'm part of a community in a way that I didn't expect to feel again. So for me, um, I think that it is, it is real, the community here is real and, and it is, it's great to be a part of it so and what we'll do for for folks that are watching obviously we find ourselves in the throes of a, a new academic year lots of exciting things happening on campus there's going to be a month-long series of programming around lgbtq history that I, you know i'm sure you're going to play a part in center for justice and liberation will play a great part in as well so we're going to share some links for these uh, upcoming events with folks um, in the post information as well as we're going to link out to the page on the university police website where people can learn more about you and your role and some of the objectives that you've talked about a little bit in our conversation today. Sure. Um, but uh, yeah, Glenn, really, really appreciate your time. I know it's a busy time of year for you guys down there. Um, so really certainly appreciate you taking some time out of the day to talk to us, tell us more about the role you're, you're working in. Um, and your time at Salem State. And we, and we look forward to seeing how it evolves and it continues to grow and, and change and, uh, and and look forward to your service to the community. So we really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. It was a pleasure. Thanks again. And that's been another episode of It Takes a Viking, the official podcast of the Salem State University Alumni Association. My name is Mike Mitchell, Associate Director for Alumni Relations here at Salem State. And until next time, thanks for watching.